Welcome back to the Roman and Popular Opinions. Today, <laughs> today we will be doing something that I haven't done in a while, and that is a reading vlog. Now, I thought about naming this vlog one of those ridiculous titles, like this video doesn't stop until a five-star read or whatever, but since I doubt that that's going to happen, honestly, with what I'm currently reading, I thought I'd just make it a vlog where it's like, as soon as there's something that I love or really want to rant about, <laughs> that is when I can end the video. That is my plan so far. As soon as one of the books that I'm reading, I'm actually going to really, really like. That is when we end the video. So let's introduce what we are going to be reading. The first thing we are going to be reading is hopefully the rest of the small modern classics these now the next one oh there's something on it <laughs> the next one that i'm going to read is this one why do you wear a cheap watch the, the font is sometimes a little bit unusual i'm going in order i'm skipping the ones that are absolutely stupid so this is going to be great <laughs> the problem is i'm just going to give you a little bit of context if you care i bought both of the box sets as you may have heard in the last few videos i have like both the huge box set with the black small classics and with the modern classics i didn't want to buy the modern classics because i knew that they would essentially not really interest me but my dad wanted the modern classics so i bought both for my birthday and now i'm working through these but a lot of these are going to be misses i had a lot of hits in the first box considering how picky i am there were a lot not as many in the modern classics but i still got them it's it's a cool idea like it's a sampler for the writer's style i guess <laughs> you could say but that isn't the main thing i want to talk about the next thing is this book i sherlock holmes i don't think i'm going to hold it up it's a little bit heavy but the thing about that is that since i am finishing <laughs> the tv show which is very sad. But since I am finishing the TV show, I don't think I'm going to read it anymore. I just, I read a couple of the stories after the episodes to like see what the differences are. I might read His Last Bow because I think that isn't in the series. And I think I'm going to finish The Study in Scarlet and then I'm done with Sherlock Holmes, I think, because the series is so well done that I don't, <laughs> that not only do I not want to read the books anymore, I think the series is way better because it fixes a lot of stuff. So I'm going to probably finish a study in Scarlet on audio and I'm going to read his last bow, but I also might just watch the film with Ian McKellen. We'll see. Aside from that, there's a few things. Okay. First of all, <laughs> this is mildly exciting perhaps for someone, but I got the second Emily Wilde book. I just wanted to, these are like my perfect covers. Okay, these are my perfect covers in terms of aesthetic. So yes, I got, I got the second one. I didn't like the first one. <laughs> I didn't like the first one. So you may wonder why on earth would I ever buy the second one? Because I love Heather Fawcett. Since I read the first one, I've read many of her books and I deeply, deeply love her writing style. So this is set in the Alps. And while I didn't like the story of the first one or the characters <laughs> or anything really, I really like the descriptive writing style and the setting of Iceland and the way she writes is just lovely. So Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands is set in the Alps. I am going to read it. I am going to read it, even if I don't particularly like it. I was waiting for the small paperback to come out because I was not going to pay 20 euros for the big one, but I am going to read it. And if anything, I am going to enjoy the way it's written because I enjoy everything she writes, at least on a technical standpoint. If I don't like the story, I will have at least enjoyed everything else <laughs> stylistically in the book. The next two are the real tbrs of this video because they are books that i'm currently reading so this is like my ongoing book <laughs> the gormenghast trilogy i am still on titus grown so i don't really think i'm gonna read this entire thing but i want to read at least the first one to see if i like it to see if i enjoy it i read I don't know, like 150-ish pages. You can see where it's marked. I've read 150-ish pages. There's all three books in here, so I'm not even hoping to read this entire thing anytime soon. But one thing I will say so far in the vlog, very, very autumnal. 
the creaky castle, the way he describes the seasons, it just hit autumn in the book. I marked that entire paragraph because like how the autumn hits the castle of Gormenghast and the atmosphere of that and the effect of the weather and the castle on the residents. Immaculate. Everything else, I'm reserving judgment because 150 pages is nowhere near enough for me to form an opinion. And the last thing is that I'm not currently reading, but I am supposed to be currently reading. It is A Fire Endless by Rebecca Ross. It's why I'm wearing the, <laughs> the woolen. Is the word tartan or a cloak? I don't know. It's why I'm wearing the woolen thing that I got in Scotland because this is a Scotland inspired fantasy. Its entire setting is basically like the Isle of Skye or any of the islands in Scotland and it's not even hiding that that's the setting. So I really liked the first book primarily because of the setting. I didn't care about any of the characters I will tell you like as soon as I finish it I don't really care <laughs> about what happens to any of them but I loved the, the setting so much and like just the entire writing style describing the setting. It's similar to Emily Wilde actually. Like I like any setting that's like northern cold island the sea nature spirits like there's fairies in emily wilde and there's also like nature spirits in this series and i will always like that even if i don't necessarily enjoy the series so i gave the first book a river endless i think four stars or like a low four like three and a half this one it's not as pretty of a cover i preferred the first one but I bought the second one because it's a duology. Like if it's a seven book series, I don't think that I would read it, but it's a duology. This is the sequel. And I really, 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 really want to read it if again, only for the setting. So this is something that I should be starting, but I haven't really started yet because I've been reading Gormenghast. And the last thing, this is just very random, but because tomorrow is the 1st of October, I have no idea when I will make this video, but tomorrow is the 1st of October. And the thing that really excites me is, I don't know, autumnal reading. I really want to read one Edgar Allan Poe story or poetry or whatever I get my hands on. And this is the other thing. My parents have like a lot of the old, old Penguin classics that I've never read. And I don't think they have <laughs> read either. But there's this lovely copy of Oscar Wilde's stories it has like illustrations and that lovely sweet old old book smell do i like oscar wilde not even a little bit nothing i've read by oscar wilde i've liked including dorian gray and one of the little black classics i don't like oscar wilde's writing but since i have this like random short story collection i thought that i would try it out there's no particular reason why i want to try it out but <laughs> I don't know. I have this need apparently to every now and then just try out authors that I know I don't like to see if I still don't like them. I don't know why I do this. I don't know why I am like this, but this has been the longest intro of all time. I don't know how long the video will be. I will try to like restrain myself. But the point is, these are the books that I'm currently reading or that I want to read. And since tomorrow is the 1st of October, and I've completed university, I've sent my thesis away, and I'm going to graduate soon. I want to make the most of October because university starts again <laughs> in November. So I really, really want to make the most of October. That said, let's get into the video. I will hopefully have something to rant about, whether good or bad, but hopefully good because... I really loved that video about Charlotte Bronte where I just like dove headfirst into gushing about that book and I haven't had that since I think. Maybe with Heather Fawcett but I haven't really gushed about her on camera so we'll see. It's been what a day, a day and a half, doesn't really matter how long it's been because I think I need to make this a little bit more interesting. Now since I've embarked on my yearly bungo reread which usually takes a lot out of me and i'm not really thinking about anything else while i'm doing it i'm gonna change this log into a daily thing because at night <laughs> i dive into it i cry i do my yearly thing but during the day i don't want to interact with it like i, I don't want to be sobbing in my room randomly at 5 p.m so 
during the day, I thought we could just make this vlog and read the random other things to distract me from the emotional turmoil of my yearly reread. But what I thought we could do now was also, I got this <laughs> mushroom sweater that I've been obsessed with for months and I finally got it. And one disclaimer first, it has long, long sleeves, but I'm not usually the person that likes long sleeves. Like I'm not that person who will make a video like this. I actually have a pet peeve from that. Those videos where <laughs> the girls will just pull up their sleeve like this much and then handle like candles and coffee and everything. It irks me. It physically irks me. If I see a video like that, I will skip it. So I apologize for the sleeves being a tad too long. There's nothing I can do about that, but I'm never going to pull them up too much because that just gives me a pet peeve. I don't know why it makes the arms look really small and baby-like. And if there's one thing I don't like, it's women infantilizing themselves. So, <laughs> so yes, the sleeves are long, but I will do my best not to make them too long. What I thought we could do now is read an Edgar Allan Poe book. I will pick a story, sit down and read it and tell you about it because I think we need to be active about this. If I just sit here and tell you that, yes, I've been reading, but I don't want to talk about it, that's no video to make. So I'm going to sit down, drink, <laughs> drink my Irish cream coffee and pick a story. Then we're going to discuss it. That's all we're going to do right now. We're going to see about later. I've read it. <laughs> I've read it. Okay, the story that I've read is called The Premature Burial by Edgar Allan Poe. This was actually straight up traumatizing, I'm not going to lie to you. Now, there's one story in The Penny Dreadfuls that's, I think, called something similar. Buried Alive, I think it's called. Now, I am a an extremely visual reader. I'm a lucid dreamer. I can imagine I have, what, what is it called, aphantasia. I can imagine anything, sense, visuals, sounds. I can imagine pretty much anything. So when I read, I can imagine everything as if a movie is playing out before me. <laughs> now, to be fair, the story is called The Premature Burial. So like, I knew what it would be about. <laughs> I was not prepared, however, to feel a little bit nauseous. Now, that happens pretty much never. Pretty much never because not only do I not read disgusting books, I'm not disgusted that easily. But something about the way that Poe described this absolute dread of being buried alive, this claustrophobic feeling, the worms all around you, it, it, it was not good. I didn't expect it. I just picked up this random book. I was flipping through the stories and I couldn't tell which ones I had read and which ones I hadn't because I know I read quite a few of his short stories actually before. I just didn't remember which ones. So I was like, I definitely didn't read this and I wish I hadn't. Like his writing is very nice, very descriptive, very gothic. As we all know, he's just perfect to read in October, but it was a maybe a touch too vivid for my liking. Now, I don't remember the rest of the stories. I don't know if Poe always writes in this writing style that seems like he's telling the story. He doesn't tell you who the main character is, but it sounds like he's telling the story, like it's essays instead of stories. I think he usually does that now that I think back upon it, but it was just unsettling, okay? It was just unsettling. <laughs> Like, again, if you read it, you could call me a chump for being a little bit unsettled, but he described so perfectly the dread of being buried alive, of being entombed, of being surrounded by worm-ridden earth and a coffin and being unable to scream and, like, feeling your lungs constricting. And he, he was just a little bit too descriptive for my liking, okay? It was, it was uncomfortable. Did I like it? I sort of did, actually, because it was very, very well written. I forgot how much I actually liked Edgar Allan Poe's stories. He just describes things in this very morose but descriptive way. I don't know how else to describe it. So we read the, the short story, but at what cost? 
at what cost? Now, I'm debating if I should read, like, another story or just not after this because this traumatized me. I think I read Rue Morgue, Pin the Pendulum, House of Usher, The Black Cat, The Telltale Heart. I definitely read all of those. Now, I don't think I read The Mask of the Red Death. Definitely didn't read Valdemar Amontillado or Hop Frogs. So maybe I'll read one of those. Maybe I'll read Mask of the Red Death. Like it's 10 pages. So maybe I'll read it. But I honestly did not expect <laughs> to be as unsettled. I just sat down to read a random short story. I did not expect to be this unsettled. But as he says in the story, something about being dead but also physically alive is a horrifying sensation just a horrifying sensation like let me die anything but being like entombed and unable to move or think or scream but still not being quite physically dead it's a horrifying prospect so i mean read it read it it's very well written it's just deeply uncomfortable to read and more than once i was actually a little bit nauseous which is very rare for me. Let's continue because I've read Mask of the Red Death. Edgar Allan Poe, I, it has to be said, it has to be said that he's a master of these things for a reason. Okay, it was excellent. The only thing by Poe that I hated reading was actually The Black Cat. We read that in high school, I want to say like in third third grade third grade of high school, I think. But I hated that specifically because I hate animal cruelty, even as a metaphor, I find unpleasant to read. So the whole cat being like, killed and hung and mistreated and stuck in a wall and everything I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't like reading. It upset me because I'm very easy to upset when it comes to animal imagery. So like, even though if it's a metaphor or whatever, I don't like animals being used in that way. But <laughs> that's the only thing that I disliked, even though I objectively know that it's probably a great story. I just personally can't stomach any sort of animal being mistreated. But Mask of the Red Death and the other story, which I just read, excellent both are excellent now the first was a little bit nauseating and unpleasant the second the mask of the red death excellent excellent short story now i said in a previous video that short stories don't really stick with me like i don't really remember short stories and they don't linger in my mind and while that's true because like a short idea doesn't capture capture me as much as like a long plot with overarching themes and character development will stick in my head, the short stories won't. But I will say that these two, while they may not stick with me, I will certainly remember liking them <laughs> because they were excellent. I actually preferred Mask of the Red Death. Like the descriptions, wonderful. Like Poe was such a lovely wordsmith. He enchants the atmosphere exactly as he wants to enchant it. And it's excellent. It has to be said, it is excellent, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm sorry, my tablet's like <laughs> losing light. I always try to keep it on for whatever reason, but excellent. I read two Alan <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe short stories now. I might actually like put it aside and maybe at a later date read from the big, beautiful book. I think I read all of the big ones now. Now, while I think I read The Fall of House of Usher and Murders in the Rue Morgue, even though I don't really remember them right now, but I definitely read them. I know Pit and the Pendulum was in The Penny Dreadful, so I definitely read it. I read Telltale Heart, Black Cat, and now these two, so I only have a few left. I think I read Amontillado and another story in the little black classics so like there's a couple of short stories left i would also one day like to read his detective book because it's so often referenced as one of like the first detectives it's even mentioned in the sherlock holmes book i would like to read that eventually but for some reason with edgar Allan poe i like small bites of him you know i like taking him in bite-sized pieces rather than long 
long form stories. So like short stories, perfectly fine. Poetry, excellent. But I feel like if I were to read like over a hundred pages of him, I don't know why I think that that wouldn't really suit me. But we're done with him for now. Now let's do one other thing that might not be <laughs> a good thing to put in this video because I know, I know that Oscar Wilde is extremely, extremely popular as far as authors go. But I've already said in this video that I don't like Oscar Wilde. So you've been warned. I want to read at least one story from this collection. I don't know if I want to read The Happy Prince or whatever. Maybe I'll check the titles of the stories and see like which one interests me the most but i just want to read one story because ever since i saw this on the shelf i've been like i want to try one more oscar wilde just to cement the fact that i really don't like him as an author <laughs> and a short story can't hurt it can't hurt so we're gonna pick a story i'm gonna come back and tell you what i thought of it luckily for me unluckily for anyone who likes oscar wilde i tried the happy prince and i tried the star child i simply hate everything he talks about <laughs> i'm going to try and not make this that mean because i know he's very well liked and i don't necessarily enjoy spending my time just crap talking things that people really like because that's not a hobby of mine to hate on stuff that is popular i just I'm always astounded. I think everyone feels that way. You're always probably like astounded and a little bit shocked when someone talks about how beautifully someone writes, how like every word that they put down drips gold and silver and you're just sat there like, have we read the same thing? Like you're just sat there confused and like I haven't seen anyone talk negatively about Oscar Wilde or his writing and I'm just sat here like I hate everything he has to say <laughs> like for reference this year i read picture of dorian gray when i say read i read the beginning i read the end and i skimmed the middle because i just couldn't stand it and i read the little black classic when when it came up and didn't like that either i just i've never liked anything that he has written his style the way he writes the words he chooses like i think that and I'm going to say this in like a non-mean way, but I think you're going to understand what I have to say. Profound things or writing that's profound to some people is similar to poetry in the way that it's deeply subjective. The same way that poetry, you can't necessarily explain to people why it resonates with you and why you like it, is I think the same with books that could be considered profound by some. I, for example, for books that I consider profound or writing that I consider deep and meaningful, I think I would be way more lenient about that and about someone not liking it than I would about books that I think are objectively well-made. So Oscar Wilde, for instance, I know some people really think he's like deep, profound. They love his writing. They think that everything, every word he puts down to paper is like beautiful and lyrical and musical, musical and meaningful. I'm the opposite. The same way that you can't explain why you disliked poetry, because I'm never going to be that person who's like, I didn't like the rhythm of the poem, or although that can also be a valid reason, but I feel like if it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. And I feel the same way with Oscar Wilde. I feel like people who like him, like him in the same way that someone likes poetry. Like it, his words and what he says just hits for you. And it's quite the opposite for me. Nothing he has to say hits for me or the way he says it. So first of all, this is going to sound very stupid, <laughs> but do not laugh at me for it because Oscar Wilde is one of those authors who, like, especially in this century, like, all my life I've known he was gay. Like, he's the gay author. He's very famously gay, actually. And when I read the back of this and it said that he wrote it for his children, I was like, children? <laughs> what do you mean he had children? But again, in his time, it was very not popular, but normal for gay men and women to be in straight relationships and to have children, even though they were very much, very much gay. But I was so surprised when I read it. I was like, what do you mean Oscar Wilde had children? <laughs> so yes, 
that confusion aside, that has nothing to do with his writing. Again, I, I don't care that he's gay or that he had children. I don't really care about the personal lives or preferences of authors. I never, never, never care about that. I don't care about his writing, though. <laughs> I do not care about his writing. I DNF'd both of the stories, actually. Something about the way that he... He also focuses a lot on, like, beauty. <laughs> Again, ironically, awesome. I mean picture of Dorian Gray, he focuses a lot on beauty and on like selfishness and meanness. And I, I don't know. I don't know how to articulate the same way that I can't articulate why I dislike poetry. I cannot articulate why I dislike Oscar Wilde this much. His style just, I won't say repulses me. Like it's not that extreme. I just, you know how when you read something that someone says is profound, but you don't find it profound? And then you feel this sense of like, this is just meant to be a Pinterest quote. I said that for Dorian Gray, I think, in one of the videos that I mentioned I read that in. But like, this feels like a Pinterest quote, okay? Like the bad Pinterest quote, not the good one. But like, this feels like it was meant to be an excerpt on a website about profound quotes. And if you read it out of context, maybe. But it just sounds like it was written to be profound rather than it being profound. I'm not making a lot of sense and I do apologize for that, but it's very difficult to put into words why I don't like him because unlike authors and books who's like writing and worldview that comes across in their writing, I viscerally hate. I don't hate Oscar Wilde or his writing. I just deeply do not at all <laughs> connect with anything he's talking about and the way he's talking about it or his writing. It just feels it feels like cheap profoundness every time I read it. I can read a line and know that someone is going to find it beautiful and deep, but all I can see is a cheap Pinterest quote, <laughs> which again, not that big of an insult because I do love Pinterest and I'm on it all the time. I hope I made my point clear because I wanted to be a bit more detailed about why I disliked everything he's ever written. But again, everything is subjective and i think we all have that one author if not more where you're just like i do not see it <laughs> i do not see it i have tried time and time again i absolutely do not see it and i'm gonna stop trying because it's just absolutely and fundamentally not for me <laughs> Yes, where are we? Where were we? I'm sorry. Lost the microphone there for a second. Now, we've done away with the short stories, and now the thing that I want to do is talk about this for like a little bit. Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. <laughs> do not look at the cover. Do not look at the cover. It's not my fault. That's the only cover that I could find without ordering the book. So I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it in this cover and I don't care. Ignore it. Anyway, this book, I read Seneca's How to Die. I don't think it's like actually by him. I mean, it's not in the Seneca collection. I think it's a collection of like advice books and then it happens to be by Seneca. But I really wanted Letters from a Stoic because that's his main thing that's published when talking about him. Now, for reference, again, if you've known me for any amount of time, if you've seen my favorite videos of all time video, Marcus Aurelius is, I think, my favorite philosopher that I've ever read so far. And I deeply, deeply relate to the Stoic philosophy, that entire school of philosophy, as Seneca himself calls it. So I am going to probably like this. And in fact, I have been liking it. I think I've read like 50 pages so far. I read philosophy very rarely and very strangely because I don't know how to describe it. It's not a story. So I read it very slowly and very randomly. Like I just pick it up when I feel like it. So am I not, am I going to read this? Maybe, maybe like during the video, maybe I'm going to like pick it up and annotate a little bit more and just put it down. But I thought I would mention it because I did finally found the, find the physical version and I prefer reading physically. I can read the ebook, but again, if I can find it physically, I would rather read it that way. So maybe I'll read a little bit of this and then I might end the video. Because again, since I'm 
completely entrenched in Bungo right now, I don't really feel like reading like Gormenghast or Emily Wilde or any of the other big books because I feel like all I can do is palate cleansers, short stories, philosophy, poetry. So I probably will not read any of the big books. I might end the vlog here, so <laughs> fare thee well. I will see you in the next video if that is so, but if I choose to continue it, then I am a liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire, because I have no idea what else I'm supposed to talk to, and I don't really want this video to be 55 minutes, because that's both a pain to edit and a pain to watch, I'm sure, because all I do is yap. I'm going to stop now, and the last thing I wanted to say is I hope to publish way more in publish, <laughs> upload, I'm talking in writer terms, upload way more in October, because this is the first October possibly in my life since I was like six years old, but I have neither school or university. So I want to enjoy October and the income of beautiful weather as best as I can. So I'm going to really do my best to do like vlogs, mini recommendation videos, even rants, <laughs> even rants and reviews and gushes, whatever. But I really, really want to for the first time in my life, take advantage of October because while I love September through December, as far as months go, they've always been associated with the beginning of the school year, with the beginning of the ac academic year, and it's going to be a little unusual to have an October that isn't bogged down by university. So in any case, I will see you in the next video. Let's hope I'm not a liar and add more clips to this. <laughs>